Okay, welcome everybody to this uh, breakout session. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about automated testing in the Mendix Digital Transformation Framework. Uh, my name is Bart Leiter, uh, I'm a consultant at Mendix. I have uh, now six years of Mendix experience. I will do this talk together with my colleague uh, Bart Tholen from Man Systems, who has uh, extensive experience with Mendix as well, as well as with the Man Systems Test Framework, which we will also talk to you to, uh, to, uh, to about today. Um, so first of all, I'd like to explain to you what is automated testing and why, why should you do it? I mean, Mendix is obviously awesome. Um, Mendix allows you to iterate very quickly. Uh, if you make a mistake, uh, you can just iterate once and do it again and uh, fix your mistake uh, and see the fix immediately. In fact, ignoring QA uh, or failing to maintain a disciplined focus on refactoring and, and, uh, uh, and testing is one of the top four bimodal mistakes by CIO, according to Gartner. This means QA is a critical discipline for Mode 2 organizations. If you don't have your QA in order, um, you can be as agile as you want, uh, but you will just be agile in iterating over bad software. So you need to have your Q QA uh, in order. What is then quality? There is, in fact, an ISO standard for quality. You might have seen this before. Um, there is an ISO standard for software quality that defines certain aspects of what makes software good. Uh, things like reliability, is your software uh, robust, will it not crash? Things like portability, can I? Uh, put it where I want it and have it run. Uh, things like security, uh, can everyone only access the data that he can? Um, and Mendix will actually take care of a lot of these things for you, but one of them is very important, and you still need to take care of that yourself, and that's functional suitability. And that's, does the software actually do what you want it to do? And that is where automated functional testing comes into play. What is automated functional testing? You're validating whether the app actually does what you want it to do. You have a set of business requirements that you get from your customer, uh, and you need to check whether that actually works. And you want a well-defined test suite. So you want uh, a, a consistent, executable test suite um, that validates your requirements one by one, and that's uh, able to be executed automatically. So you can do it every night, so you can get quick feedback, um, and you can immediately get uh, um, you can immediately get notifications of everything that goes wrong, and you can immediately pick it up the next development day uh, and start working on it. Why would you want that? Your developers need quick feedback, not just in, um, uh, uh, in terms of does it do what the business wants it to do, but also in terms of what the business wants to do today, does that break what happened yesterday? Uh, if you get new requirements, you need to make sure that your test suite can test the old requirements automatically so that you, um, you know that the new requirements don't interfere with the old requirements. This also supports the DevOps process because they need to keep your application running, they need to make minor changes, you need to have a regression test suite of functional tests so that you know that everything still works. In terms of the digital transformation roadmap, you've also seen this slide before, I think. Who has not seen this before? Or are you afraid to raise your hand? <laughs> I see one. <laughs> um, Mendix defines the four P's, the portfolio, and the, the kinds of applications you can create with Mendix, the people who, who's working on your project, the process, how do you do your project? Are you using Agile? Are you maybe still using Waterfall? Don't do it. Um, and the platform, so how can we help you with that? And for automated testing, it's actually the same. So the same four P's apply. Only you ask different questions. For portfolio, do I really need to have an automated test suite for every single app that I build? Or are there different kinds of apps that maybe need different focus in terms of testing? For people, who are involved in building the tests, who are involved in, in defining the tests, who are involved in executing the tests? For process, how do I include automated testing in my projects? How do I make sure that my agile process um, delivers tests as an output, delivers, uh, uh, creates a generalized regression suite that I can use, and platform, how can we, as Mendix, help you achieve those goals? How can we, what tools can we deliver to you that allow you to do that? 
But of course, in addition to the four Ps, we have the full digital transformation roadmap uh, that we define, um, that uh, we use to guide your company uh, through an agile maturity process. You start at the start phase, obviously, um, where you start with a small app and celebrate success quickly. Deploy, develop, deploy, uh, test an app very quickly. Then you go to the structure phase where you get your um, development processes in place, where you get your first uh, quality assurance processes in place, um, where you formalize the strategy. And then you move on to the scale phase, where you go to really big things, where you do larger apps, more apps, uh, an app factory. Um, and automated testing, for the start phase, we focus only on delivering value, only on proving that Mendix is the way to go. But in the structure phase, and especially going to the scale phase, um, having this automated testing in place is really important to make sure that you have a repeatable process um, to delivering quality apps, to make sure that you don't go to the scale phase with, uh, with a couple of small agile teams that are just deploying prototypes as fast as possible and not thinking about quality. So, in detail, um, how do we do this? Um, I'd like to again go through the four P's with you, uh, only in more detail, uh, with for every P, how automated testing applies uh, in that case. So let's start with portfolio. Um, do, we really do we really need to test every single app? You know, maybe there's, maybe there's different kinds of apps. Um, for this, we use, the, uh, at first, the Gartner um, uh, page layer model, which defines th three different categories of app. Uh, you have systems of innovation, systems of differentiation, systems of record. Systems of innovation are very quick, um, very innov innovative apps that you develop with a small team um, that, that try to make an impact. Um, this is, these apps are small, they pose a small risk. Uh, you, want to, you want to innovate with this and you want to prove some business value. Uh, the time frame is in day, measured in days or weeks, which means that we recommend, uh, we think the overhead of building a full test suite is actually quite large uh, in relation to the entire project size. Uh, for these kind of apps, Mendix is very, very well suited. Uh, and the out-of-the-box functionality that you get with Mendix makes it so that you don't really need to think about um, building a whole test suite for every single requirement, because that will just slow you down. The next category, apps, uh, systems of differentiation, are the systems that make your business unique. They, they make you what, what is you. Um, they are important to you. They, uh, uh, they show your business value. Um, and they are usually a lot bigger. They are bigger in scope, they are bigger in time frame to develop them. Um, we're talking weeks, maybe months with Mendix, if you have a really big one. Uh, and this is where automated testing for us is, uh, it really shows its value. Uh, because you're now talking about a development time frame of months, so you're, uh, maybe you have some developers changing during your project that need to know the old requirements. Uh, you probably have changing requirements as well because you're no longer doing a very small app that has one use case, you're doing a, a somewhat larger app that has multiple use cases that might change during the delivery of the app, which makes it important to be able to validate that what you already <laughs> built is still compatible with a new um, app. So this is where, where automated testing really shines. Final category, systems of record. And these are your master data systems. If you build these in Mendix, uh, obviously possible you will have a large project uh, that will take many months. Um, I've personally been involved in some of these projects, and in these projects, it's absolutely critical that you have automated testing, because these projects have a lifetime of, of well, the, the actual software has a lifetime of many years. The project's usually several months. Um, you need automated testing here, uh, because you will hand over your software to a support team, or you will have a DevOps approach, and three years from, from now, if you make a change and you break something that you built yesterday, nobody's ever going to know unless you have a good automated test suite. But for these, for these final systems, also consider um, uh, or uh, including other forms of testing. So things like uh, performance testing are usually very important. Uh, having a strict integration test suite is also really important there. It could be important for systems of differentiation, depends on scope. 
a different way uh, of looking at the portfolio that we also uh, often use at Mendix. Uh, it gives a kind of a different view. It's more towards functionality and more towards uh, risk analysis. So we divide s systems that uh, are built in Mendix according to two, um, uh, uh, two axes. Uh, either it's an internal, internal or an external system, and it's related to a business unit or a company. Um, so what happens as you move up or to the right, uh, complexity or exposure increases. So the, the risk increases. If you have an internal business unit app, you're basically doing something for one business unit that only 10, 20, depending on the company size, people are going to use. Um, this has usually low complexity, low exposure. So really, the risk is not that high. Maybe the overhead of, of building a full automated test suite is, is too high to do it. It's basically a small system, system of innovation, a small system of differentiation. Moving up towards the right, you get to either low complexity and high exposure, or you get to high complexity, low exposure, which makes the risk a lot higher. Um, because either your app is really complex, which usually also means that it's more towards your core business, um, or you have a somewhat simple app, but it's exposed to a lot of people. And that means if you have more people using your app, more people are going to find problems. That's, that's life. Um, and that means that you need more focus on automated testing. And the final category, um, obviously high complexity, high exposure, these are your critical apps. If you don't have an automated test suite, you will have issues. You will, uh, you will run into maintenance problems, um, which is bad. Also, for these systems, uh, consider doing, again, performance testing, uh, integration testing. Um, so we saw that not all systems are created equal. Um, building smaller systems obviously means that you need less time for automated testing uh, than building bigger systems. Now, you've chosen which systems to build, which systems to build a, an automated unit test for now. Who's going to do all that? I mean, you, ha you have a development team, you have, you have some, uh, some guys or, or girls that are very good at Mendix. Now, which of those guys or girls is going to build your tests? We say, do it yourself. Don't have a separate, t separate test team, just have your developers work with your business to define the tests. Uh, your developers can create test cases, very simple, uh, we will demonstrate in a minute. Um, your developers are doing developer testing anyway, so they are building the app on, uh, on their laptops uh, or in the cloud. Uh, they're clicking through the app anyway. You might as well record a test case while you're busy. This also means, because we have uh, a very simple tooling for this, that your test case can be created by your junior developers. So no longer do you need specialized developers that know, uh, know your testing tools um, uh, and that are, that are experts in building tests. Uh, you can have Basically, everyone do it. Um, we recommend having some senior developers uh, uh, as test engineers, um, but more over your entire development practice. So not, not necessarily um, allocated to one single project, um, but as test specialists for your, uh, for your enterprise practice. Um, the test data itself should be supplied by the business, because, of course, the business has given you the requirements the business knows what the input is, what the expected output should be. So they should tell you, OK, we have this use case, uh, we have this requirement. When we put in one, we expect the output to be four. And like I said, any advanced subjects like testing custom widgets, testing custom Java codes, uh, IoT connectors uh, should be managed by the test specialist that you have. And this results in this. Uh, recommendation. Uh, typically, for, for normal development projects, you would say we have one test engineer uh, for every two other developers, at least. Some say even you should have 50-50. Um, for Mendix, we typically recommend having one dedicated uh, uh, test specialist to four regular developers. Um, and this goes even further than this, because typical Mendix projects might not even have four developers. So we recommend having this one test engineer um, work with multiple projects. Um, so for every four full-time developers that you employ, maybe in two or three different projects, you need one test engineer. So then you have this one test engineer for your project. What's, what's that guy going to do? And what are your developers going to do to support that guy? What is, it, what is your developer going to do to, um, 
to make sure that you end up with a good test suite. How do we include this? Obviously, the first point is start immediately. Um, don't think, uh, well, the first phase of this project, um, uh, we, we only have limited scope, but we know that it's going to take half a year, so let's just get started, and then we'll th start thinking about tests two months from now. That doesn't work, um, because then two months from now, you will have a system like this and no tests. So then you have to start from scratch. Um, I see some people nodding, so it's a, <laughs> it's a known, uh, known issue. Um, you need to start from, from the first moment, basically. And um, that will allow you to start building your regression test suite from day one. And you will have the, system, the functionality that you built day one um, immediately in your suite. We do not recommend adopting uh, strict test-driven development, uh, so creating your tests first and then your functionality. Uh, we believe more in, in validating the business value. So because Mendix allows you to iterate very quickly, um, it also allows prototyping very easily. And you, you can't really build a test for a prototype because you, the requirements are not set in stone yet. Uh, so we believe in validating the business value and then building the tests. An important part is once you have the test, make sure to run them daily and automatically. Uh, make sure to uh, create a tool that looks at, your, uh, looks at your team server, downloads, deploys, runs the test automatically. We have a tool like that. Um, and that means that you get daily feedback on what's been committed to team server. Does it still fulfill all your, all your requirements? Uh, does, has nothing been broken? You get immediate feedback. You can immediately fix those problems. So how do we define tests? We think the test description should be done in the user story. That's where you define the functionality in the user story. Um, so that's also where you can define the tests. Uh, if you define the user stories in the, Mendix, uh, in the Mendix platform, your business users can chime in with comments and say, OK, I think this should be a good test case. I think this should be input. This should be output. Um, and your developers can immediately put that into practice while they are busy, busy uh, implementing the user story. They see the story in the model or they see the comments. Uh, they can immediately build the test case as well. To make sure this is actually done, you should include it in the definition of done. And the definition of done, uh, which you have, uh, um, uh, agreed upon with your pro project team basically tells you when has the user story been implemented. Just add a line to your definition of done saying there must be a test case or there must be an explanation why there is no test case. Because as I said before, and as I will say on the next slide, not everything has to be tested. So maybe you're trying to, um, maybe you're trying to test whether a data grid button actually opens the next form. Mendix does that for you. We test, we test the Mendix framework from A to Z and back to A again. Um, so you can rely on any built-in functionality just working. Um, focus on the most important functionality and focus on the functionality that you actually built. So focus on your business requirements. Um, if something is very simple, if you have a very simple story that says, uh, when I click an email, I want to see the email details, that might be too simple to have a test case. Uh, so to comply to the definition of DOM, you would put a comment in your story and saying, I did not write a test case because this is too simple. This is built in Mendix uh, and explain it that way. But just make sure that each and every story uh, is tested or has an explanation for testing. So next, um, I think the most important part, we know uh, who is going to test. Uh, we know what we want to test. We know exactly. Um, how we need to make sure that the tests are there. Now, uh, in concrete terms, how can Mendix help you? What, what exactly um, is the tool that you should use for testing? And to explain this to you, uh, I will hand over to Bartole, uh, who will show you. I will give a demonstration yep. after I show you one slide. So most of it is presentation. First, let me tell you a little bit about the product. We have integrated the application test suite with the user stories, so it fits in the application lifecycle of Mendix. We have made a recorder, so that makes your life very easy recording. So you, what the developer normally does when he builds, he deploys and he clicks around. Well, just press record and you can record what you click around and you have your test case, but I will show you. 
do it yourself. That's the very important thing. We want to make speed. So testing is not something that should consume time. It should have speed. And what Bart said, do it daily, because when the issue is still fresh in the memory of the developer, he knows where to look for the solution very quickly. And if you test after several sprints and you separate the testing from the development, then somebody has to think again, what did I build? How do I have to fix it? Yeah? People work with mental models. So they have in their mind how the code should work. Then the test might give back it broke, maybe because of a regression that somebody else changed something. But then they know how to fix it. Our platform is uh, based on Selenium. So you can uh, run it on any Selenium. You can do it yourself, or you can go to the cloud to BrowserSec or Source Labs or any other party that delivers Selenium. One of the key features is that we have Mendix keywords. So any GUI element of Mendix is supported by us. So you can quickly do Mendix applications. And when there is a new Mendix release, we will make sure the keyword supports the new release. So you have easy upgrades because your test scripts stay functioning as long as your application logic doesn't change. And the platform is also extendable. So if there are custom widgets or app store widgets, we can make sure that there are support for the widget in the application, both in the recorder and in the playback. So I will present to you the application in a simple case. I will have to turn the laptop and stand here because I have no split screen, so sorry for that. So what we have prepared, there is um, There is a simple application in the App Store, a sample application of Mendix, the task manager. It doesn't do really much. It has a dashboard with open tasks and your own task in different uh, phases. And you can create a new task and you have a list. So very basic demo application. And to record the test script, first step is you have Sprinter. In Sprinter, you have your stories for your sprint. And as Bart said, in the definition of done, you either explain why not or you create a test case. In this case, I'm going to create a test case. So these three stories are integrated in the application test suite. So I will log on. And when I log on, I come to uh, the home form where I can pick my different projects. In this case, the task manager demo. And then I land on the dashboard. And the dashboard of the, this application has your most recent test cases. So you can see what has been executed, your statistics for the last week, and your integration below here with Sprinter. So you have your three different stories in my sample sprint. So I can say, add a test case. And what is my simple test case going to do? I have a task, and I'm going to change the owner. So I say, Change owner of task. I can pick already a small template. And the reason I do that is I don't want to log in every time I'm recording something. I'm working on this app. I want to maybe do multiple scripts. So let's open the app automatically. And I have now my core test case doing nothing. So I start at login, and I say record. This screen is now empty because it's recording. You can see on the top here the little R saying it's recording. And every browser event ends up here. So let's switch back to the task manager application. And in the task manager application, let's open a task. Let's change the owner to me. And let's save. This has now been recorded in the application test suite. So click open, set owner to me, and save. So I can store this, and it's now in my test script. So I can already play back this script. And to play it back, I say run. I can choose against which application, because I might have multiple environments. 
I have to pick Selenium, so we use in this demo browser stack. That's a cloud Selenium host. I quickly switch to it. In browser stack, you see all your sessions. It looks a bit complex. And over here, in a moment, we will see the application playing. So let's let's run it. And then, oh, so somebody else is also uh, demoing live in the expo. We share uh, the MTF server. But let's look at my browser stack account. Here's the new session. So let's see if we can still see what it's doing. Okay. I think we missed it, so let's quickly do that again. It failed, it says. Sorry, let's switch to monitoring. Let's look why it failed. Uh, if you run it, there is some logging. And it says after the login phase, it shows you a screenshot. And there are no tasks. So when there are no tasks, I cannot play it. So I can do it again. And I can show you in a moment also how to handle this situation. But let's see in my script if I use the right user, so login is logging on as user one, that should be okay. So let's quickly run it again. Because in our simulation of the task manager demo, I automated creation, completion of tasks, so it might be a random moment. So it's here again. Look at the session. Now there are tasks, now it's opening. OK, now there were three tasks. So a bit of unlucky moment that there is only one task, or, or only zero tasks. So when it's successful, you get it back green. When it fails for some reason, you get it back like this one. Now you might ask, you don't want a failed test if there is no task, because that's not your business case. Your, your test in this case is, I want to change the owner. So Besides recording, you can do a little bit more. And for that, I prepared the same task, but then with some extra features. There is, for example, if I go to the change owner step, I combined those three steps that I just recorded a moment ago, open, set the owner, and save into a keyword, a sub-function. And this step I made conditional based on another keyword has tasks. So when I open this one, it counts the rows in the grid. And if it's not equal to zero, then uh, it's OK. So I'll switch back to monitoring. I will not be showing you the live browser stack every time. But when I look at uh, results that I prepared, executed by me, I have here two variants. One of them does the login, checks if there are tasks, and if there are no tasks, you get a, b a blue icon saying it's not executed. So in this way, your test does not fail, and still your application handles it. That makes the difference between uh, bulletproof tests and the, the quick record playback tests. So the suite can handle every situation, well, small other functions, we have the scheduler, of course, so you can combine different test cases in a suite and run that suite daily or even every hour if you have uh, a lot of commits and you want even quicker feedback. And the other parts are configuration and import. This was a small presentation. I've shown you uh, recording, shown you that you can make it bulletproof and showing you hopefully how easy it is to use the application test suite. Uh, where's my mouse? So Bart, would you like to wrap up and uh, I'll see if I can switch back to your PowerPoint?
Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your demo, Bart. Okay. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a very, uh, very, very, uh, very nice tool. I especially like the way it's really integrated into Mendix, and it really records what you're doing instead of giving you a technical script uh, uh, in, in Selenium code. Um, and that gives you a really nice way, especially if you integrate with Browser Stack, to get immediate feedback. I, I also really like the fact that it records a video of your test, and it gives you screenshots of where it failed. Uh, so you can just see what it looked like for the user when it filled. And you can really discuss with the business, like, I have this screenshot, what do you want to do in this situation? Do we need a new test? Do we need to change the requirements? Um, so it really allows you to interact there as well. So we've had four Ps. Um, I think it's time for a short recap. Um, as, we've see, as we've seen in the start structure skill model, um, for the start phase, automated testing is a bit too much overhead. In the structure phase, you need to, know, you need to make sure that you have this uh, in place for your teams so that you can profit from it in the scale phase. For portfolio, um, use it mostly for your medium, your large apps, uh, your differentiation, uh, and your core apps. In terms of people, make sure you have one tester for every four uh, regular developers, um, and have the developers build your tests, have your business provide input. Um, in terms of process, very simple. Include the test in your definition of done and stick to it. Make sure you run the test every day. Uh, only then will you get quick feedback, and only by putting it in the definition of done will you be able to make sure that every requirement has a test. And finally, in terms of platform, use the, the Man Systems application test suite um, because it really allows you to build tests on the Mendix level. And with that, I'd like to thank, thank you for your attention. Um, if there are any questions, we have some, uh, we have some time to take those. Frank? Yes. There are input-output parameters, so you can uh, use that. Yeah. Yeah, you can use it in a later step. You don't have to use it immediately. In every, every step, you can define an output parameter. And anywhere after that in the test, you can use it as an input. So you can use strings or checks or, yeah. or use it in an assertion to see if the, the value is what you expect. Right, the gentleman in the back with the fancy mustache. Yeah, I was just uh, wondering, uh, so if you run a test, you, you actually change your data. So in the example you gave, you changed the name. But that leads me to believe that if I run the test a second time, I'm actually testing a different use case than where I changed the name to myself again. Uh, is there a rollback? Like at the end of the parent test, does all the uh, commits we just did, is that all the uh, I, you actually change the data, but that's something you, as a test engineer, you have to do that in your process. Of course, in the script, you could change the data back. You could record it as well. But you can also have a strategy to uh, have a certain database prepared and restore it every time. Or you can have a strategy that you start with an almost empty application and every time run the tests that build up the entire data set. So there are different strategies to do good test management. That's why you need also a test engineer to think about the exact question that you asked. And, but you need your developers, what Bart said, also, so you can speed and have lots of test cases. OK, thank you. OK, well, there was someone else. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the keywords uh, that were used in the scenario. Yeah, yeah. There is a keyword set for every Mendix screen element that is possible, that is clickable, probably. And we have also a basic keyword set for Selenium stuff, so that we can use that for custom widgets. And that's something that we maintain. So with new Mendix releases, Main Systems creates new keyword sets and uh, makes sure that uh, the scripts on top of those keywords keep on working. So you can create your own keywords? You can create your own keywords and organize, uh, reuse your own uh, pieces of uh, test scripts. I saw, showed you quickly in the demo that with the prepared script, I clicked to the cha uh, change task owner as a sub keyword so that you can create yourself. 
all the way in the back. Yeah. Is that using the browser stack and you said, uh, am I blocked into that? What, uh, can I make sure explain something else? You can use source labs, you can use your own Selenium. Sometimes uh, I even do on my laptop uh, a simple Selenium runtime that I downloaded. It's all configurable, yes. You just say where your Selenium server is, and that one has to uh, control your browser, so you have to install your browser as well on the Selenium server, and then uh, it'll work. Yes? Uh, does it have an API? Can I start it remote from a CI server or whatever? Not at the moment, but it's built in Mendix with some Java extensions to Selenium, so it might be something that we put really high on the roadmap. Of course, you can combine it. Things you can automate, you, you can use the tool for. And if there are some tests that are difficult to automate, then you can do that manually. And you can also combine it with load testing or security testing. There are more ways of testing your application. And the advice is, yeah, be smart. Uh, things that you can automate. And if your application has a long life cycle, then you can every day reuse it and have your quick feedback. And if something is really rare or really difficult to automate, you might choose to do it manually. Yeah, you, you will always have a combination of automated and, and regular testing. Because the, if you do, for, for instance, prototyping of certain functionality, uh, you won't have the test case yet. And then you will still have users just manually testing. Uh, and even if you have the full test suite, you will always have uh, smoke testing, development testing with just people that, that want, to manually, want to really have the feeling of manually clicking in the application. So, uh, you will always have a mix. This is this is this is just a tool that's used to make sure you never have you, you don't have regressions and to make sure that you cover your whole application in tests. It doesn't it doesn't totally replace manual testing. One yes. more? Um, you, you talked about having uh, keeping an initial state of your data so you can bring up the test, but over time your application's not going to do forward. Yes. Is there any best practices to, you know, to anticipate and maybe minimize the risk of or the cost of doing that? I think typically um, this is an issue that also pops up in, in evolving your application, uh, even unrelated to testing. I mean, you will have migrations for your data when you are deploying a new version, uh, and you could use those same migrations to migrate the data on your test instance. You will typically have one. Uh, you will typically have a test and acceptance and a production instance, um, and the test instance also needs to be migrated. So that that should continuously refresh your data. Right. All right. Thanks for your attention, everyone. I think we'll wrap up here.